We are the Dog Gurus. We help pet care businesses launch, grow, and profit. We also offer business consulting services and staff training programs so your staff can truly know canine body language and have the safest facilities as possible. We also have a ton of other resources for businesses, business owners, and managers that will help you reach your goals. So you can find us at thedoggurus.com if you're unfamiliar who we are. And we have Laura says hello. So thank you for joining us. All right. You're from Canada. Yay. <laughs> Our um, international audience has ar arrived. So. That's right. That's right. We love that. So, Before we get into the topic of today, I'll let you know next week, Carrie and I will be discussing creative ways you can reward your staff without breaking the piggy bank. I mean, your staff has been running on all cylinders this summer. I'm sure they're working very hard for you. So we have a lot of ideas to share uh, for you that are low cost ways to reward them and keep the morale high. So join us next Wednesday, July 26th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. So, oh, it says Robin says hello too from Illinois. So and well, Meg is from Ireland, so oh, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Hi, Megs. <laughs> Shout out to our international folks. I know. <laughs> All right, so today's topic is games you can play to manage play groups. You know, as owners, I think that we are always looking for ways to teach our staff about canine body language, but we also want to teach them how to properly and safely manage play groups. So the dog gurus came up with a few games that are real easy and simple that you can play anytime. Well, not anytime. You, you got to start out <laughs> maybe the not so busy times to, to try these things, and then you can play at any time. But they're, they're games to reinforce you know, particular needs. And the first one that we can talk about is body blocking. So I know, Carrie, you guys played this game at your facility a lot. So do you want to just explain the different ways that you taught your staff to do body blocking? Sure. So body blocking is a technique basically where you're using your physical space to control a dog coming into your space or to separate two dogs or a group of dogs. And one of the fun ways to do that is what we call the hula hoop game. So you can take a hula hoop and lay it flat on the floor and have a staff person stand in the middle of it. And then if dogs approach and they try to put their feet in or jump on you or get close to you, take a few steps forward or a few steps to the side or to this side or backwards. But you're basically just controlling that circular space that the staff person is standing in. It's also fun that when dogs start to respect that space is to have one of them like jump in and jump out of the hula hoop. And, and that kind of becomes the hokey pokey game for dogs, if you will, where, you know, they have to go in and out. You can ask for a sit and anytime you're working to ask for an alternative behavior just gets the dogs a little more focused on you. So, but that's, that's the hula hoop game, which is a real fun one. And I think that you want, the goal is to not, you know, to manage the the body blocking in a, a non-threatening way. You know, you don't want to stomp. You don't want to like spray water at them. You just want to just gently use your body to move forward back. You don't want to be intimidating at all. I mean, that's not the goal for, for the game, correct? Well, it's communicating with the dogs on their level because their whole communication style is with body language, not verbally the way that we communicate. And so being able to do something that I mean, if you just, if you're watching dogs and observing their play, you can see when a dog is a little pushy or forward and they kind of push into another dog or they may body slam them. I mean, they may get really rough, but um, when we can take a step that communicates at their level, they will respect and understand that faster than using words that they may not necessarily understand. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's really actually, once you start doing it and you can buy these hula hoops at the dollar store, it's so inexpensive to play this game, um, but it's actually really easy to do once you start doing it and they're very responsive. It's interesting. So the next thing that we can talk about is recall. So yeah, and that's basically the come the come cue. So what are what are some of the ways that you can teach that and play that with your staff? So one of the things that we did, and this is kind of the guidelines for how our daycare games through the dog gurus works, is that when you're in a group of dogs, you can say the dog that you want to recall to you, you can say their name once, and then you can use a lot of other words to entice them, but you can only say their name once. And then depending on kind of the, the level of expertise your staff has, they have a certain amount of time for the dog to actually come and get close enough that you can pet them. 
So, so you may, you know, say Cooper and then, you know, Cooper may look at you or he may kind of not look at you, but then if you get his attention, then it's like, puppy, 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 you know, whatever you want to do that's exciting that will call the dog to you that makes it fun. Cause you certainly don't want when, and whenever you're doing recall training, you don't want to be like Cooper come, you know, and sound all mean, because I mean, who would want to come to that? It's not exciting at all. They think they're in trouble. So, so anytime you can use that as kind of a positive reinforcement using fun, you know, either, you know, body language or, and using, you know, happy verbals that, that will get the dog to come to you. Yeah. When I was trying, when I would try to like get a dog's attention for them to come to me and distract them from what I didn't want them doing, I just tried to be the most fun person in the room, you know, (laughs) and try to be exciting and, and get their attention that way. So they were like, what's going on there? Let me go see. (laughs) Uh, So that was always fun, but you know, recall so important to teach the dogs that you're caring for. Look, it can really prevent a lot of behaviors that you don't want them to doing if they're, you know, the chase is getting out of control, or maybe they're running over to go eat poop or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Or yeah, maybe there's two dogs that are playing with each other and having their own good time. And, you know, they want to butt in, you know, that's a great way to get their attention and distract them. I used to always tell my staff, especially when they were newer and they weren't as confident working with dogs, that any time that they want to interrupt play, so whether it's the, the fun policers, if you will, that, you know, two dogs playing appropriately and that third dog wants to come in, you know, any time that you can redirect that just by calling the dog to you is is perfectly okay. And it's going to control things at such a low level, nothing's going to escalate. So you can interrupt them a hundred times if you need to over the course of their play session. But but doing that frequently and getting their attention, just breaking their focus momentarily will definitely keep things on a lower level. Yeah, absolutely. That one's just so important. And I always thought it was interesting when, you know, you get these dogs that come into the to daycare and they really don't know much commands. It's very interesting. And you're like, well, geez, what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> so, so anyways, it's just a, it's a great tool to have on your side. That is a, a benefit of a membership program. That's really easy to provide and just call it, you know, daily manners reinforcement, because <laughs> anytime you're asking a dog for a sit or you're, you know, recalling them to you or just telling them off because they're jumping up on you, you're just reinforcing good manners. And that's very easy to do. And when the dogs are there frequently and they hear that repetitively, then they will start to respond much faster and more appropriately. Oh, I love that title though. Good Manners Club. That's yes. <laughs> Good Manners membership. I mean, yeah. that's sure. great money. Because we do it all the time, right? <laughs> but on another note, what's really important for that is that the staff are all using the same words. So we just kind of had our little, you know, teacher's toolbox is a laminated poster on the wall. And it had, you know, these are what we use. If we're asking them to go, you know, outside, it's out. Inside, we use the word in. So it was short, easy commands and everybody was on the, the same page. You know, sit was butt to the floor. Down meant down, laying down on the ground, off meant, you know, get off me or off whatever object. So having everybody use the same terminology, got the dogs all on the same page a lot faster. That was a, that was one of the things that was a huge game changer for my facility. I mean, I first got introduced by the dog gurus because I purchased the CDs of knowing dogs. And that is a staff training course that you can use for your staff that teaches them about body language. And there's one whole course of it is just on how to manage group play. I mean, but the main thing is that your staff comes in and maybe they're watching TV and these, you know, dog shows or whatever, and they, they, you know, they have different words or language, but to get everybody on the same page with knowing the same education and using the same language is a huge game changer. And you're going to see that there is a lot less chaos in your groups and it's just easier to manage. So yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So group sits, you want to talk about that? So you can do this multiple ways, um, depending on how your daycare is set up. And if dogs are used to having treats, you can have something that's a reward or praise is a great reward for a lot of dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But just asking, standing where you are and asking dogs to start sit. Usually if you're up and walking within a play group, there's going to be some dogs around you. So start by the dogs that are right around you. And if they start sitting, then asking the ones that are, you know, maybe five feet away or six feet away and just see, do they come near you and sit? Or can you get them to sit all over the room so that they're spaced out? There's so many ways to challenge yourself to do this, but, but it's just being consistent and using the command once when you're looking at a dog. And if they don't do it, you know, making sure you have eye contact with them, then asking them again, it's the sit, 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 (laughs) saying it over and over and over. It's like, did you want them to sit on the first or the ninth sit? (laughs) (laughs) That doesn't work. Um, You know, and and that's a great technique. Like you can get them all to sit and then maybe the reward is you throw the ball for them and then you get them all to sit again. But you know, for, for our play groups, we were very cautious about having food and rewarding them that way. We did a lot of praise and just, you know, a lot of positive reinforcement verbally that way, because, you know, it does increase risk for an incident to happen when you have food out there. But um, that it's group sit is fun. And do you have video to sh- that you want to share for that? Let me see if I can. I, don't, I can't remember what videos you were going to show, but we do have some some other footage. The other thing about group sits, it can be the same type of benefit of, you know, getting them to distract them from doing something you don't want them to do. If they're again, going over or maybe gonna eat something they don't, they're not supposed to be eating. You can also try the groups, the, the sit command, or if the energy is getting out of control, you know, use the sit command. That's also very helpful. Okay. Oh, wait, you know what? Put it up again. And then I got to show it in the screen. Okay. There we go. And let me, let me put it over here. So it's bigger. Perfect. There we go. So this is actually a combination of a group sit and a gate boundary. So the goal was to have all of the dogs sitting outside of the door and then me giving them the command to come into the room. So it it works the group sit idea and it definitely works focus and impulse control because, you know, dogs just want to rush in and, you know, who can get there first and go through the the threshold. So that's definitely one of the the positives of of that exercise. Which kind of brings us into the gate boundary training. Because look, before I, before I really started using all the methods that the dog gurus taught me. Like it never failed that we'd have a new person coming in and they'd get so frustrated frustrated every time they were trying to put a dog in and out of a play group because they all, lo and behold, all the dogs would end up in the catch and they'd be yeah. like, ah! <laughs> you know? and those little dogs, those little dogs are awfully tricky at this. <laughs> Very <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're harder to control at the gate than, than the big ones. Right. It was funny. So this is just an example from the other angle with the staff person inside the the playroom and then the dogs in in the outside waiting. And then obviously the the lower photo is where she's releasing them. Depending on how long some of the dogs had been with us because we competed in the daycare games every year, sometimes they would just be like, oh, it's February again. Okay, we're all sitting. You know, (laughs) it's like they knew the routine. And so they would they would just automatically start doing um, whatever we were asking. But you can also, depending on how good the group is, is that start calling the dogs one by one. So you're not just giving them the, okay, and everybody runs through the door, but asking them one by one by name to come in, which, you know, again, works that impulse control and discipline, you know, self-discipline on the dog side. Absolutely. And, and once you really get this down, I mean, you can amaze like the new staff and just look really cool too, because you can, you know, open up the gate and, or the door and looked how far, far away she is. And they just are so obedient. But so the trick on this one is that we actually had two doors open. And (laughs) so so we were like, okay, you you think you're so good about one door, let's open two (laughs) and see what your discipline level is. So that was really fun when we did that one. Way, way to level it up. That's awesome. Well, and again, so some of these dogs had been with us year after year. So we had to keep, you know, finding ways to challenge them. This one just kind of showing that little dogs can do it too. You know, you got a Boston, you got a, a Bichon and a Frenchie in there, dogs that may not always be, you know, fast to, to listen and, and do commands, but you know, all of them sitting nicely. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, and if you want to get your staff involved, you can do a group sit with your staff. 
<laughs> I think this one's my favorite. <laughs> so every year, just to like spoof Robin and Susan, we would come up with something silly. So we had one video a few years ago where the uh, staff member was standing outside the room and all of the dogs were sitting inside that threshold. And then the camera panned away. And when it panned back, it was the staff that were sitting in the doorway. So, and then when they gave the release, the staff came running out of the door. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's another video you showed me when we were in Galveston that was really funny because they were like all like, you know, heads by the doorway and everything. It was really cute. <laughs> it was really cute. So, so this was not during the daycare games, just outside, you know, in the play yard and, and just making dogs sit. If they're right around you, why not ask them for something? So, you know, in a traditional daycare setting, if you're not doing enrichment or kind of daycare 2.0, there are a lot of times where you can just stop and a dog that's near you just ask them for some behavior. Maybe they know how to shake. And if they don't work on training with that, I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can work on with, with dogs. And any time that you're engaging them and it kind of gets their brain focused on something other than, you know, this random dog that they may be targeting and doing something inappropriate, like trying to hump them or, you know, anytime you can redirect them and ask for that alternative behavior, it's just a great way to, to, um, you know, keep that focus and kind of build that bond between you and the different dogs. And then to up at a level, um, we would start adding in equipment. So we had our, you know, climbs and, you know, get our three smarty pants on, on top of the climbs getting everybody up there or, you know, as many as we could. Poor Hank over there is so big. He kind of took a few <laughs> times. <laughs> and then, and then we would also just switch things up. So change the direction of the climb so that it's not like a, a straight line or that, you know, your multiple levels, anytime that you can just switch things up that, especially for, you know, these dogs here, you got a shepherd, a poodle and an Australian shepherd. I mean, very, very smart dogs that, you know, you have to keep them challenged because they need more of a university than daycare. So when you're able to do that kind of, of switching up of the game, then they, they don't get bored with it. And this would be like obstacle, you know, training. Hi, right. Courtney. Coach Courtney's on with us. So she oh, just yeah. <laughs> um, So this was just, you know, taking some kennels that we had and putting them in a maze and throwing some like Cavaletti poles in there and letting the dogs run through that. So, you know, just, Anytime you can just be a little creative and, and create something that's kind of fun for the dogs. Uh, and then this is just working with, again, kind of those Cavaletti, you know, poles and, and cones. And, and we call this like a cross four, I think, and making them kind of jump in, in different patterns. So. Is that Newton? That is Newton. <laughs> It's so funny. Cool. I was looking at these videos. I found a whole bunch of videos of me first training him to sit and then down. And I mean, the outtakes on the down videos were hilarious. He was so <laughs> impulsive. He would not down for anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then what I thought interesting about this is that this was when we first started working with clients and we were just trying to get this particular dog and she was always very willing to work, but to just kind of get up on climbs and sit and you know, the whole thought process behind elevated platforms is that, you know, calm feet is a calm, focused mind. So, you know, being able to work with a dog in that capacity and then switching it up a little bit. So adding some of the fit pause equipment that are inflated and they're not as stable under their feet. So it's, you know, touching that surface that has a little bit of a tactile feel to it, as well as instability. Yeah. And then adding another element. Okay. So now we've got her standing up on the climb. So how do we get her to just pause up, put her front paws on that and rewarding, you know, that moment. What's interesting for me when I went back and watched this is that um, she ended up with osteosarcoma and had her right front leg amputated, but mm -hmm. in, consistently in this video, it was the right paw that she was kind of more tentative to put up. So, so yeah. And then this one is the, oops, is it going to show? Put your left foot in and you shake it all about. You do the honky pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Silliness, but yeah. Um being able to do some fun games as well. And all of that, a lot of those were showing instances or examples of dogs being kind of one-on-one -on -one with a staff member, but there's a lot of that you can do. You could put five hula hoops down on the ground. And like you said, get them at the dollar store. They're not an expensive tool to have, but you can have, you know, four or five dogs in, in different hula hoops and, and just have that be an exercise that they're working on. So if you have um, a bigger group and have, you know, two or three employees watching that group, 
put a whole bunch of them down and just see, challenge the employees to challenge the dogs because usually the dogs are definitely willing to do something. It's just, uh, it's just changing a little bit of the mindset for the dogs as well as the staff. Yeah, I was just going to mention that, that it's, you know, I think that when a staff has been there for some time, it can easily get a little mundane to watch the play groups day in and day out. So this is a new way to keep them engaged, to keep the job fun for them, to keep it fun for the dogs. And plus, if you have cameras, I mean, and their parents are looking at these cameras, that is great footage. But this is also a great thing that you could do, take pictures or video of and use for marketing too. So Absolutely. never forget all the marketing opportunities that you can do with the games that you're, you're playing. I always found that you had staff, well, I think everybody in every facility, staff have their favorite dogs, and then they probably have the dogs that they tolerate because there's something about that dog, whether it be a breed or a behavior, but it's just frustrating for the staff person. And when you can take something like that hula hoop game and get the dogs involved, they learn a different appreciation for that dog because sometimes I think dogs are naughty because they're bored. And right. so you can take a dog that has a little bit higher intelligence drive and you can work with them on that it builds a different relationship for that staff member and they start to see the dogs through kind of a new lens and it can definitely change their relationship and how they feel about those dogs that may have frustrated them in the past. Yeah, it can build the bond between them that's, that um, is improved from maybe before. Yeah. So I wanna talk a little bit about, cause you know, we're, we're mentioning some great ideas for some games and I know that the Dog Gurus has a time chart of activities that they recommend. So we're not saying that, you know, your whole play session should be these games because we all know that their attention spans are, are not very long. <laughs> so, so, you know, like one of the things that they suggest is to break it up into thirds. You know, you want a third of it to be relaxing time, maybe a third of it to be just observing the dogs and then a third of it to be some type of activities. Is that kind of how you set up your groups? Yes. Yeah. So there was that kind of calm rest period. There was definitely group play. And then we had our individual activities and group activity time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think even in like a traditional group play setting that there is a natural ebb and flow that happens. The dogs aren't go, go, go all day long. And when that quiet time starts, that's the perfect time to pull out a Dr. Seuss book and just read to the dogs. I know a lot of people who do lodging will have kind of that bedtime story, you know, check-in or tuck-in time, mm -hmm. but you can do that with a group of, of daycare dogs as well. And sometimes just... <laughs> You could read anything, literally like a technical manual. First, you must insert the plug into the electrical hey, the SOPs. Have them read the SOP manual. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're doing that, as long as you're reading in kind of a sing-songy, calm, happy voice, it doesn't matter what the text is. It's calming. And that will get the dog energy level to go down. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Courtney says, yes, rest time is important too. And puzzles, toys, and treats. Go, dog, go. It's oh, it's favorite. my favorite book of hers. <laughs> oh, go, dog, go. Because it always ends with a dog party. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So, you know, these games are really great. A lot of good ideas. And you can be as creative as you want with them. It just is it's just reinforcing good behavior throughout your play groups and keeping your staff engaged. Is there any questions out there? If there is, please go ahead and put it in the chat. And... Anything that we didn't mention? Oh, you know what? One of the games that we used to play a lot was Follow the Leader, which is very simple. Yes. Yeah, because if you if you know you want, especially if a new dog's gonna be entering the gate, because we don't want the dogs to get mobbed. I mean, that's one of the things about the gate boundary game, but you don't want the dogs to get mobbed. Nobody, nobody likes to go into a room or a, a party and get completely mobbed, right? So <laughs> human or dogs, but you know, follow the leader. You, if somebody we would, we would teach that to our staff and they would just go clap their hands and start walking around the room. And it's amazing that all the dogs start, start following. That's yeah. a really easy, great game. Jen says, read the SOPs. She laughed at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. <laughs> it's like a lunch and learn every day. Give it to the staff and they get to sit there and read the lunch and learn to the dog. So I think that one of the things about the follow the leader too, is that when the dogs really start following you and they're all focused on you, that's when you can stop and just see how many of them will sit when you stop. Or, or ask them to sit and then start again or then change directions and just kind of, you know, mix things up a little bit and they'll definitely enjoy that. So, 
Yeah, and there's been an idea that I, I'm going to share that I've been having, and it's not necessarily like games you could play to manage the group group play, but a game that I thought in my head to teach your staff like canine body language or to identify a play styles is that you could make a game, bingo game board when they're learning this stuff and just have them observe either some video footage that you have of your play groups or your play groups out there. And they can, once they they hit a row, maybe they get like a candy bar or, you know, some type of award or reward or something. But I've been playing with that idea because I go to Orange Theory Fitness and they do all sorts of fun things like this. And they had this bingo board. And I'm like, how can we use this in, you know, this in, in the industry? And I think that's, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. Even if it's, you know, if they finish the module and knowing dogs and then like their hands-on activity is to go and observe this particular, you know, body language or this, you know, behavior, if they can call it out to somebody, then, you know, like put their dot on that square on the the bingo board. And and that just kind of reinforces for them that it, it's fun. Learning about dogs can be fun. Yeah. You want to make it fun and rewarding for the people as well as the dogs. Emily says lots of great ideas. They also sound like fun for everyone involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, you think about it. How many times do we interview a potential employee and they're like, I want to play with dogs all day. And we're like, yeah, that's about 10% of the job. The rest is cleaning and, you know, <laughs> behavior management and all of that. But really when you can make it more fun, but safe, then it becomes more enjoyable for everyone. Yeah. When you're not having to be a referee or, you know, getting just frustrated because the dogs are you know, just their energy levels at a level that's out of control, that, that's not fun. So these are all tips and ways that you can help that. We created the visual when we switched from kind of that traditional group play to all enrichment based daycare that we no longer wanted to be the lifeguard, like in those little lifeguard towers, you know, just kind of monitoring the chaos from afar. We wanted to be, you know, like swim coaches on the edge of the pool, teaching them how to be better swimmers. So, you know, anything that we can do that interacts more with the dogs to help them be better behaved and and making it fun while they're learning a new command, a new trick, or or just how to be more tolerant of the dogs around them, then it, it does make it more fun and more engaging. Yeah. Courtney asked, do you use treats during group activities? So we talked a little bit about this earlier, but I would, I did not use them. We used praise, verbal praise and, you know, affection for the reward, just because we just wanted to make sure that there was no risk of any type of resource guarding to happen in the group play. So that that's my two cents on that. Yeah, we did use treats, but we use dry Cheerios because they're very low value. So that's, you know, but again, when we converted to all enrichment, that was something we were conditioning the dogs to be able to tolerate taking treats around other dogs. So, and if we had a new dog that came in during the assessment or evaluation period, we would always find out from the pet parents, you know, did they have any food aggression or, you know, was there any resource guarding of, you know, people, toys, treats, anything like that. So if that was the case, then we wouldn't offer that that day that that dog was there. So just, you know, being attuned to all the different things that can happen. Yeah, I I would say just do what's right for your facility, but keep in mind, you know, what your staff is uh, educated about and can handle. So pause to play. Is there any further resources such as books or videos that I can buy that give ideas for group games? Well, yes, of course. (laughs) So uh, if you're not a member of the Dog Gurus, we do have a few membership programs that has a ton of resources that you're asking for. Um, We also have Knowing Dogs um, 101 and 201, as well as Pet Gurus College that has all this stuff that we're talking about in in that system. It's very, it's educational staff training for your staff. So the Knowing Dogs and Pet Gurus College is, uh, you can have up to 25 staff members on there. So basically, as you have new people come in, they go through the courses, they learn canine body language and group play. And we also have courses that are designed specifically for each role. So like a client care course and the dog daycare counselor, seasonal pet counselor, enrichment counselor, counselor, Yeah. But, you know, especially the client care course is really valuable because there are words that we do not want to say in our industry. I mean, there are trigger words. So part of that course is teaching them how to communicate effectively with the clientele. So you can find that at, let me go ahead and again, I put it in the chat, doggurus.com. 
but let me also put in there the membership link. So that way you can look into that a little further, but we also just have a library membership. And that's very low cost investment. It's only $30, $39 a month. And you can get um, all the articles that a lot of content on there that talks about these games as well. And is there any other questions out there before we sign off or Carrie, is there anything else that you want to add to this conversation? I want to know from either of our international folks from Ireland or what was it, the UK or no Canada, I guess she was up in Canada. What does their daycare look like? If they offer a daycare service, what does their daycare look like? Do they do enrichment? Do they have, you know, indoor versus outdoor? Ireland may have some cold winters or at least rain. So, rain. You know. <laughs> well, Canada's cold and gets cold up yeah. there too, right? Right. So just uh, interesting to see. And um, I would definitely encourage people, if you haven't had your staff do the daycare games, it is so much fun. Oh, and good. it's definitely a focused time where they can work on those three skills, the gate boundary, the recall, and the group sit. Um, it's always in February. So it's after kind of the busy holiday season. So it's a slower time and it gives you the opportunity to kind of work with the staff and making sure that they understand what the skills are that they need and then developing them. And then, you know, we had like a little internal competition about it. And, and not only did you receive the, the gold, gold, silver and bronze medals from the dog gurus, you know, when they completed each task, depending how it was scored, but we would come up with something fun to do. So whether it was a metal or one year we made name tags and that had like, you know, did they have three golds or four golds or, you know, what their, their different scores were for the, or their awards for the game. So that's a lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. So Meg wrote back to us, I'm only opening my place next year. So at the moment, just learning, but it will be enrichment based. Yay. So, oh, good. You're starting off on the right track then. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It, it really is. All right. Well, I guess that wraps it up for the day. Thank you all for joining. I'll also invite you to participate in our Facebook group, Grow Your Pet Care Business. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat. We, it's a great place to learn from other people in the industry, and it's just a, a, a place to share ideas or to get advice from. We only have two rules, just please be nice and no selling, but it's a great place to join. It's free. Go ahead. The link's there. And everybody, have a great day, and everybody, you're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.